Meet Ben. Ben, do you think you're running fast? Ooh. Your speed is now 7 to 9 kilometers per hour. Would you like to be able to run at the speed of light? Even if you either burn out in a couple of seconds or crumble into bits? Maybe you would also like to be able to swallow poisonous snakes and try to survive 70 degrees below zero? And even meet aliens? Well, Ben, you asked for it. Let's go. What if you could run at the speed of light? Ben, have you heard about The Flash? Barry Allen, the comic book hero. Do you think you can run like him? But shouldn't you take physics into consideration? Anyway, Ben, if you would run at the speed of light, which is 300,000 kilometers per second, you would die in a couple of seconds. And believe us, Ben, you wouldn't like the way it would feel like. Of course, for a couple of seconds that you'll have, you will see amazing things. For example, you will see the universe coming back in time. This happens for a certain reason. The faster you move, the slower the time flows. And if you start moving at the speed of light, then the time for the objects around will first completely stop. And then as you accelerate, it will go backwards. That is, perhaps, you will even get into the future. Although, in fact, it will be difficult for you to see anything there, because at this speed, you'll be experiencing various visual aberrations. At a speed of 300,000 kilometers per second, your body will instantly heat up and burn out because of the friction of the molecules of the air. But let's suppose that you are wearing a spacesuit that protects you from high temperatures. Moving at the speed of light, you can run around the world, the equator, seven times per second. Unless, of course, you run into something. The force of the blow will be fantastic, as if several huge trucks crashed into you. But what if, if you were moving at the speed of light on a spaceship? Oh, Ben, you wouldn't like the feeling either. At this speed, even several hydrogen atoms per cubic centimeter will crash into the bow of the ship with a huge acceleration, which on Earth is achievable only at the Large Hadron Collider. Because of this, you will get a dose of radiation equal to 10,000 sieverts per second. Hey, Ben, that will be more than enough for you. A lethal dose for a human is six sieverts, and such a huge radioactive ray will crash your spaceship and destroy all life on board. Well, Ben, how do you feel after this super marathon? Are you ready to move on and swallow this poor uh -oh. little snake? What happens if you swallow a poisonous snake? Actually, it is impossible to swallow a living snake, since the average length of the world's shortest one is about 10 centimeters. Ben, mm. this might be more than you can chew. Ah, anyway, now you yourself resemble a snake. The snake will die in the first minute. It will choke. As for you, Ben the Snake Eater, you will most probably die within an hour from severe poisoning. But since it was the smallest snake, Ben, its poison may not kill you. But you may have a number of other problems. Mm. Ben, we're not sure that your gastric juice can digest snake scales. As a result, the snake begins to rot inside your stomach and you're threatened with intoxication. But let's assume that your stomach can handle the scales. Then there's one more interesting question. What will happen to the contents of the snake's stomach? These substances will be harmful to your body. And if you will be able to manage with all the problems of digestion, then how will your organism Ooh. remove the snake's skeleton bed? And this is the main question. This process will be extremely hard and unpleasant. Most likely you will need some surgical treatment. Avoid eating the whole snake, Ben, especially if they are still alive. Well, Ben, we bet you now want to cool off for a bit. Then we set off for Antarctica. What will happen to your body if you will try to survive 70 degrees below zero? Ben, at a temperature of 70 degrees below zero, you won't even be able to make a fire. At such low temperatures, gas almost does not evaporate. So quit trying. What a pity, because it was one of the very few ways to make fire here. So how does a human feel at extremely low temperatures? At a temperature of 70 degrees Celsius below zero and a wind of five meters a second, after 10 to 13 seconds, your bare hands begin to hurt very much. And after 35 to 40 seconds, you start to feel numbness in the fingers. Heat loss from the surface of the respiratory system increases several times due to the heating of frosty air and its moistening. Since in central Antarctica, the absolute air humidity in winter is about zero. The heat loss is so intense that it can cause direct hypothermia and frostbite 
the lungs. You will feel aching chest pains and an excruciating dry <laughs> cough that lasts two to five hours. And also, you will experience spasms of the vocal cords. And calling for help won't work here, Ben. After eight minutes, the legs will lose their sensitivity, even if you are wearing high fur boots and wool socks. Further experiments are becoming too dangerous, Ben. We need to get you out of here, because we still need you for other, more important things. Now we will be meeting Alien. What happens if, or to be precise, when aliens arrive on our planet? Aliens can be carriers of interplanetary bacteria, which can cause the epidemic of unknown diseases to which our immunity is not adapted. In this case, Ben, most likely, we will die. It is possible that the aliens will come with a single purpose, invasion and colonization. We think these evolved bastards can easily take control of everything that is happening on the planet and, if they will want to, destroy us only with the power of thought. Even an alien ship can be radioactive and deadly to us, Ben. But in any case, we have Ooh. nothing to fear. After all, if the aliens still appear at the doors of NASA, they will have an unpleasant surprise. The NASA director won't come to meet them with a smile and greeting poster. Instead, they will be met and detained by FBI agents in level four biological defense suits. Instead of a presidential room in a luxury hotel, we will settle them in a hangar in a special quarantine center of the Department of Agriculture in New York. There, aliens will be thoroughly examined by doctors from National Institutes of Health, and their ship will be dragged away by the Nuclear Intelligence Group from the Ministry of Energy. Ben, why are you constantly scrolling through the worst scenarios in your head? After all, the aliens are much more advanced than us, and most likely they're used to solving problems peacefully, so they will come with good intentions. Perhaps they will give Ooh. us ultra-modern robots for resource extraction, show us how to teleport, to read mine, and use our heads at last. Yes, Ben, that's how it can be. Oh, Ben, why are you so nervous? Your heart's beating like a jackrabbit. But every cloud has a silver lining. Now your brain works several times better than before. Due to the fast heartbeat, the blood circulation in your body becomes faster, which significantly affects your mental abilities. Are you curious, Ben? Girls just love smart guys. We can create this situation artificially. For example, we could give you an injection of adrenaline or make you drink 40 cups of coffee at a time. What if your heart begins to beat at a speed of 300,000 beats per second? In this case, blood will run through your veins almost at the speed of light, Ben. Of course, your heart veins and blood vessels won't be happy about that, and they will not stand even a couple of such contractions. But what should we do? We need to continue our experiment. And what should we replace your heart with a motor, and then thicken the blood using special medical preparation? Oh, Ben, now that's a different story. You're not the loser you were before, Ben. Now you are a real superhero. Now all processes in your body become a thousand times faster. With such mental abilities, you will be able to create drone insects, develop Helad, and predict wars with maximum accuracy. It is a pity you will only have two hours to be a genius because your body will not last long and you will die. But you will die a genius. Let's consider this experiment to be successful. Share this video with your friends. Thumbs up and subscribe. Click on the bell button to be the first to see new videos. We still have a lot of amazing things to share with you.